Hey everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel Savvy Forensics. So, in the previous video, we have talked about the basic principle of identification of body fluid that is blood. In this video, we'll be discussing about the preliminary examination or the presumptive tests that are usually used for the identification of blood. So, as you can see, the flowchart here, where there are basically three tests that are usually done for preliminary identification of blood or blood stain. The first is the colorimetric assay, second is the chemiluminescence and third is the fluorescence assay. Now these two terms, if you have watched uh, my previous video series about blood stain pattern analysis, I have explained them very clearly as they are basically used for the identification of latent blood stains. So if you haven't watched that video, please um, go to the channel and watch that video and you'll be understand, you'll be understanding them clearly. I've explained the differences between them also. Let's talk about the colorimetric essay. Colorimetric essay, as the name suggests, colory means color imparting, metric means we are measuring, and the essay means examination. So basically, there are uh, three tests for preliminary colorimetric identification of blood, which is the phenophthalene test. Now, I know that you all are aware of this term. On this test so i want to know it's another name in the comment section so please do let me know what is the other name of phenophthalene test the second is the leukomalakite green test and the third is the benzidine and its derivatives so let's move and understand these tests in the in detail mechanism of presumptive essay we have discussed in the previous video let's understand here in a brief way so basically it is based on oxidation reduction reaction which is catalyzed by heme so this is the molecular structure of heme. I told you in the previous video that heme consists of two parts, the ferrous part and the protoporphyrin ring. So it is together combined way it is called ferroprotoporphyrin. This is the chemical or the molecular structure of heme. So let's see how it plays a major role in the identification of blood. So colorless substrates are catalyzed by this heme and they are converted into colored products. So the chemiluminescence as well as fluorescence assay, they are also the colorimetric assays because uh, they impart color, but uh, this gives chemiluminescence and this gives blue-green fluorescence, which, is, which can be seen in the dark environment. So these assays, the presumptive test, they are very sensitive and they can detect blood samples up to 10 raised to the power minus 5 to 10 raised to the power minus 6 fold dilution. So you can understand here that these are these tests are very sensitive. They can detect this small amount of uh, sample or this much dilute products also. So let's see how they actually um, do the identification. So the first is the Castlemayer test. So the another name of phenophthalene test is the Castlemayer test, right? A reaction in which phenophthalene now. We know that the principle of colorimetric assay is that phenophthalene or a substrate, this is a substrate, it is colorless. It is catalyzed by heme with hydrogen peroxide as an oxidant. What oxidant means an oxidizing agent. So you can understand this test clearly from the reaction given here. So this is the phenophthalene. It is colorless in nature. In the presence of hydrogen peroxide and heme, heme act as a catalyst. It will, it will be converted into a colored product, which is pink in color. So you have to remember this color. It can be asked in your uh, net exam. So you have to remember that the oxidized product of phenophthalene will impart pink color. So this uh, through this test, we can get a brief idea. We can preliminary identify that the particular stain that is present on any kind of surface or in the crime scene can be blood. Let's move to another test. Oh, so these are the results of the phenophthalene test. You can see that this is colorless and it is in the presence of blood or the blood stain. It is converted into a pink colored product. Very easy, right? Left is the negative one and the right is the positive result of the phenophthalene test. So let's move further. The second is the leukomalacrite green test. Again, here only the substrates are changing and the imparting resulting colors are changing. The main mechanism or the main principle is the same, which is the oxidation and the reduction reaction. Very simple. 
So what is leucomalachite green? We know that malachite green is a triphenylmethane dye. So this is a dye. Leuco base form a malachite green is color colorless. So malachite green is a dye and it's leuco base. It is colorless in nature and when oxidized in the presence of heme, it will impart a green color. So you are you can remember these colors uh, from the some substrates also. Here it is green, so you can see that the results will be green in color. So this is the reaction. This is leucomalachite green substrate, which is colorless in nature. In the presence of hydrogen peroxide oxidizing agent and the catalyst heme, it will be converted into an oxidized product, which will be green or blue-green in color. This gives a presumptive positive identification of blood. You can see the results here. This is the negative result and this is the positive result. You can see that the color which is in part is blue and green in color. Or you can get a completely green color. It depends. Next test is the benzidine derivative and its derivatives. So this is important. Here again the substrate will be benzidine and the color which will be imparted in the result will be different. Let's understand what color we'll be getting. So the oxidation of benzidine can be catalyzed by heme to produce blue to dark blue color carried out by an acid solution. Now benzidine was found to be carcinogen. So here you have to understand that earlier benzidine was used as a substrate for the identification of blood. But it was found in the later terms that this benzidine it, it is carcinogenic in nature. Carcinogenic means it is a cancer causing agent. Right? So it had to be replaced because it has negative health effects on the person who will be carrying out the examination. So another uh, component of the uh, benzidine is the orthotolidine. It is a dimethyl derivative. So you can understand this is benzidine. The dimethyl derivative of benzidine is the orthotolidine, which is also carcinogenic in nature. Hence, it had to be replaced with tetramethyl benzidine, which is the four methyl derivatives which are included in the benzidine. So this is not carcinogenic and it can be used safely for the identification of blood. So let's study the oxidation of TMB can be catalyzed by heme to produce a green to blue green color under the acidic condition. Now this test is carried out in acidic condition bile and the leucomalachite test is also carried out on the acidic condition. But the phenolphthalein test is carried out in basic condition. This is also important to remember. So you can see the test here. Basically, this is a benzidine assay. The most important one is the TMB test. These tests are put here to make you more uh, understand more clearly the basic principle. This is reduced benzidine. When it is oxidized, it will give a blue color. It will be getting completely blue color in the presence of heme. In the orthotolidine test, also the colored colorless product is the orthotolidine, which is a reduced form. When it is oxidized by an oxidizing agent, it will be turned into a colored product, which is blue in color. And the third test is the TMB test. It is also called TMB, tetramethylbenzidine, which is usually used nowadays. Colored, colorless product TMB, which will be converted into a colored product, which will be green. Uh, green to blue green in color so, so you can get both of these results so for post graduation students you can present these uh, reactions in your examination so that um, it will be more scoring and more understanding for you all so you can include these reactions and score good marks in your examinations it is a way of scoring now you have to remember here that as soon as h2o2 is being dropped on the substrate which contains a sample of the stain we will get the results in seconds so if the results which are getting if we are getting results after four to five minutes that results are negative results false positive results so you have to remember this uh, we are we'll be getting the results in seconds after putting the reagents so this is another point to remember so this was all about the preliminary examination of blood stains. In the next video, we'll be discussing about the confirmatory tests which are used for the identification of blood stains, which are the uh, microcrystal test. The next video is also very important. So please stay tuned um, until then. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. 
you can share it with your friends and spread the knowledge and further subscribe to this channel for regular updates thank you very much for joining